Hi, my name's Shawnee Davis, and welcome to Adventures to the Edge. Of all the marine mammals, none has quite caught our imagination as much as the dolphin, and yet several species of dolphin are facing near extinction in the wild. This week, we see what local conservationists are doing to try and save Hong Kong's very own Chinese white dolphins. Wildlife is under threat like never before. Man-made climate change, habitat loss, and illegal poaching are devastating the world's environments. We've lost half the animal species on the planet in the last 40 years, and all large marine life could become extinct by 2050. I'm Sean Lee Davis, a photographer, filmmaker, and conservationist with a passion for adventure. I photograph some of Asia's most glamorous celebrities, and now I'm turning my camera on nature's true beauty. I'm out to showcase the glory of the natural world and raise critical awareness about poaching and exploitation. Join me on Adventures to the Edge. Dolphins have captured our imaginations throughout history. And yet many species of dolphin are on the verge of extinction. There are 40 species of dolphin the majority of which can be found throughout the world's oceans. Despite many species being protected, according to the IUCN, nearly a quarter of those species are endangered, with dolphins living in rivers and coastal areas being particularly vulnerable, like the Chinese Baiji dolphin, which was last seen in 2002, and a local variant of the Indo-Pacific humpback dolphin, called the Chinese white dolphin, which is in serious decline. In many ways, some of the dolphin and porpoise species are facing some of the greatest risks. They're most vulnerable to entanglement and fishing gear. We've seen the extinction of some of the river dolphin species. We have the vaquita, a small porpoise that now numbers less than 100 and may face extinction in a matter of 10, 20 years. It's frightening to me to think that with all our efforts, all our awareness, we would watch some of these species go extinct. I plan to raise awareness about these man-made threats facing marine mammals and ecosystems through my Love is Wild photo exhibition. Unsustainable fishing is a serious threat to dolphins. When they hunt for fish, they often get caught in large trawler nets as bycatch and drown as a result. Dolphins also communicate and hunt with a sophisticated sonar that makes them very sensitive to noise pollution. For dolphins living in coastal waters, like our very own Chinese white dolphins, they are equally threatened by water pollution, ocean traffic, and land reclamation. Humans are the biggest threat in every aspect. Climate change is because of humans. Overfishing is because of humans. So you look everywhere, look at all the threats, somehow there's a human involved. To see the effects for myself, I venture out with the Hong Kong Dolphin Conservation Society, or HKDCS, which conducts regular surveys to monitor the dolphins. We're just offshore the Hong Kong Cheplakok Airport and Lantau Island. Behind me, you can see the giant construction going on, which is the Hong Kong Zhuhai Bridge. 1,400 square kilometers of land has been reclaimed for this bridge and for other construction projects. Now, while this may be good for the economy and the future of Hong Kong's infrastructure, it's not so fortunate for the local Chinese white dolphin residents. According to WWF, over the last 20 years, at least 2,000 hectares of dolphin habitat has been damaged or destroyed through reclamation works. The disruption to their habitat is so profound that there are now only 61 dolphins left, down from 158 in 2003. I'm joined on board by Dr. Samuel Hung, chairman of the HKDCS, who has researched these dolphins for over 20 years. The dolphins are facing a, a quite a number of threats. Uh, the first one is the fishery bycatch, uh, that they may be entangled in fishing nets. The other one is uh, marine pollution. Uh, there are a lot of environmental contaminants in the waters. And also universal traffic, uh, there are a lot of construction boats, uh, container boats that go through their living habitats every day. So these are the main threats. But of course, you know, the coastal development is another uh, major threat uh, they have to deal with. To add to an already bleak situation, the proposed third runway 
will put even more pressure on the dolphins as another 650 hectares of land right in the heart of dolphin habitat will be reclaimed. Do you think there's enough awareness in Hong Kong and within the institutions as well as government about the plight of these dolphins? It's quite surprising that the awareness level of dolphins uh, in Hong Kong is very high. But unfortunately, the awareness is not going to help them uh, enough to survive in Hong Kong. We do need to use that awareness to translate into action. You know, we can use our individual power to lobby the government to uh, implement more conservation strategy, like establish a larger marine protected area for the dolphins. So there are a lot of things that we can do as individual citizens. We venture further out to find and observe the dolphins around Lantau and hopefully get close enough so I can photograph them. Oh, we can see the dolphin. There we go. How exciting! I mean, you don't think of Hong Kong as a biodiversity hotspot, but look at it. Lantau is so beautiful, and we have dolphins. You know, I've sailed these waters many years. I've never actually seen a dolphin. And because they look pink and white, they really stand out from the water. It's uh, quite an unusual sight. They're not the prettiest of dolphins in pictures, but when you see them, they're actually quite beautiful. Amazing as they are to see, it's heartbreaking to think that these Hong Kong dolphins might be lost forever due to our lack of respect for their habitat. Oh, we just saw another one breaching. I missed it again. No! I've missed four dolphins breaching, which is infuriating, but so exciting. I just can't believe this is Hong Kong, everyone. Guys, girls, please, let's do more to preserve these dolphins. We have to get the word out that these dolphins are under threat. We cannot let this beautiful species go extinct on our watch. We have to do more. You know, even if it means coming out and seeing them for yourselves, I highly recommend you do that, because once you see them out here, you'll be blown away. I just, I'm actually, Quite emotional right now. As quickly as they arrived, they disappear, and it's time to head back to shore. I'm left to ponder the fate of the dolphins in a society that values economic growth above the survival of a species. Of course, it's not just in Hong Kong where dolphins are under threat. 4,000 kilometers away in Sri Lanka, another population of Indo-Pacific humpbacks closely related to these Hong Kong dolphins is on the verge of disappearing. I visit the tropical island with the hope of documenting these endangered dolphins and the challenges of marine conservation in the Indian Ocean. The relatives of our Hong Kong dolphins that we're looking for, the Indo-Pacific humpback dolphin, reside in a remote area in the northwestern part of Sri Lanka. I meet with Howard Martinstein, a local expert on dolphins in the Kalpitya region, to find out why their populations are in decline. These dolphins are competing for food with the fishermen in the lagoon. And, you know, fish stocks are on the decline as well. I saw them in 2005 initially. And there were about <clears throat> 20 uh, dolphins at that time. So yes, the population has uh, declined to five in 2011. And then we had one that stranded last year. So at the most, there are four left. Behind me is Dutch Bay, where you can apparently find the Indo-Pacific humpback pink dolphin. There now only remain about four of them, so they are obviously critically endangered, and probably this population won't last. The bay is stunningly beautiful, which has seen little urban development, unlike the waters of the Pearl River Delta. But the abundance of fishermen is not a good sign for the dolphins. We search for hours and hours, but don't see any trace of the dolphins. A mangrove island provides a welcome break from the monotony of the search. Now this is of course still salt water, and we have here a population of mangroves. Mangroves are hugely under threat across the planet, so to see such a healthy stock of mangroves here is quite exciting. 
I take a walk around the island. There's plenty of plastic debris, but no dolphins in sight. It was never going to be easy finding the dolphins out here. But the empty fishing nets are also a sign that the food source which the dolphins rely upon has long since gone. When they said lagoon, I wasn't expecting a giant, giant area of water. To try and find four dolphins here is going to be nigh on impossible in the time that I have. What's worrying is that there are very little conservation efforts to help these dolphins. The hopes for their future remain pretty dim. As the sun goes down over the horizon, it's time to give up the search. When I see them, they just don't look happy at all in their mannerism, in their behavior. They look so much like, you know, they've given up on life. Uh, it's really, really sad. And you only know that when you really see the humpback dolphins elsewhere, that, you know, how they would normally behave. The decline of the Indo-Pacific humpback dolphin in this bay shows how a relatively small fishing community can wipe out a dolphin population. If we don't do something soon, our Hong Kong dolphins might suffer the same fate as their Sri Lankan counterparts. After the break, I'm keen to find out more about dolphin species who live out in open ocean. And I tried to get as close as humanly possible so I can photograph them in the wild. I'm on a journey to learn about the environmental damage being done to the world's oceans and how dolphins are under threat in the wild. Dolphins are susceptible to noise pollution and contamination of the waterways, plus they face habitat loss and unsustainable fishing practices. In Hong Kong, I saw how the Chinese white dolphin is being affected by land reclamation and ongoing construction. And now I'm on the northwestern coast of Sri Lanka, where there is a big fishing community. Ranio Naniokara, a local marine biologist, explains how the fishing trade can be a threat to dolphins. This kind of fishing here are really uh, death traps for fish, cetaceans, turtles, and so on. It's an issue, especially in the northwest and the northern part of Sri Lanka. Ironically, local fishermen actually depend on the dolphins to find their most valuable catch, yellowfin tuna. This association between fishermen and dolphin can be lethal, as dolphins often get caught up in the fishing nets and drown. Sri Lanka really hasn't had any mitigation methods when it comes to, you know, avoiding the bycatch of small cetaceans and so on. Dolphins are definitely harassed. At times they're even harassed because the fisher follow the dolphins because the yellowfin tuna go along with the dolphin shoals. Fishermen also compete with dolphins for their food and as fish stocks collapse around the world, dolphins have less and less to survive on. I now head out to open ocean with marine mammal expert Howard Martenstein in the hope of finding and photographing oceanic dolphins. We will know where the dolphins are because that's the advantage of going south we have because well. we have the commercial yeah. boats out there. We press on with our eyes peeled for the telltale splash of a dolphin, but the early morning sea swell makes it hard for us to see anything. Being at sea on a small boat for hours on end is surprisingly exhausting, from the strain of searching under the intense sun to the pounding the body takes as the boat slams against wave after wave. And to add to our problems, a storm rolls in, slowing our progress. We came through a bit of a storm earlier and we emerged to this very placid, almost glass-like sea. It's, it's flat as a pancake right now. And it's a huge contrast to bouncing off the waves. And it's so quiet, you can't hear anything except for the boat rocking in the shallow waves. With the improved visibility, we finally catch sight of a pod in the distance, 
and head off at speed to catch them. It's absolutely chaotic but totally mesmerizing. Our boat is surrounded by hundreds of dolphins on all sides, jumping and splashing around us. And it's not difficult to tell what species these dolphins are. The mid-air acrobatic displays are the signature characteristic of the spinner dolphin. This is one coming out of the bow here. Amazing. There he goes. Bow riding. Um, wow. Male, yeah. I mean, these guys never cease to amaze me. They're so playful. They're always jumping up in the air. Absolutely. You know, they are one of the most spectacular dolphins in the world. They come in the morning hours into the inshore waters to rest, socialize, and play and to avoid predators. Oh, so and so one of them just yeah, jumped. Yeah, yeah. Do, do they jump for, for play or to... For various signal. reasons. As, as some of it, like today, what we're seeing is that they're jumping for play. Are these dolphins under threat from any man-made activity? Of course, I mean certainly under threat in the terms of if there's excess fishing going on in the area, there's not enough food to sustain them and uh, as such, you know, that, that is a threat, you know. But ours is not the only vessel out here and we're joined by a tourist dolphin watching boat that plows unbelievably straight through the pod, causing it to scatter and dive. Is it good to develop tourism here, or is it bad for the dolphins? It, it's, it's good if it's done properly. Um, so certainly it's good because we need to raise awareness, because that helps support conservation of marine mammals, and then we will all benefit from that, but proper procedures need to be in place. So that's the challenge. The dolphins have dispersed, thanks to the recklessness of the other boat. Time to start looking again. Our task is made easier now that the swell has died down. It doesn't take too long for another sighting. This time though, it's not a dolphin, but a green turtle. I swim right up to the turtle, making sure not to get too close. And he's certainly not camera shy. Turtles, like dolphins, are also victims of unsustainable fishing practices, often getting caught up in netting and being left to drown. That was an amazing experience. It came right up to us and uh, didn't seem to mind us at all. That was wonderful. We leave the turtle to his own devices as he descends to the depths. We resume our search for the dolphins. Howard is keeping a keen eye on the horizon for any hint of the pod's location. And then we find them again. Spinner dolphins are almost impossible to swim with as they are extremely fast and skittish. So I plan to use a kayak to get as close as possible to film them with an underwater camera. With the water flying up in my face and the drag of the waves pulling the kayak from the boat, I have to use all my body strength to hold on. It's time to release. As I might, they are just too quick for me. I have to console myself that, if only for a short moment, I was there amongst them. Oh my goodness, that was quite a 
vain but funny attempt at trying to get close to the dolphins on a kayak. And it really just shows how useless humans are in the water in all respects. So you have to have a lot more appreciation for these magnificent creatures who are so smart and really hard to get close to in the wild. Seeing the spinner dolphins in such spectacular fashion was a heartwarming contrast to the disappearing humpback dolphins of Dutch Bay and the dwindling numbers of dolphins found around Hong Kong. People have not been really educated. We always get, a, get the feedback from the local populace saying that if they knew, like if certain species would come to this sort of, you know, to this extent, that, to be on the verge of extinction, they wouldn't have fished or killed them as much as they did back in the day. So I would say it's a lack of awareness, really. Certainly, when you look at conservation in Sri Lanka and what we could do, we can always do a lot more. And education, I think, is the key. And secondly, I would say that we need to focus on the school children, because I think that way we would get change into our system a lot faster. If we're to coexist with dolphins in the future, we need to start respecting their habitats more. If the current pace of construction and unsustainable fishing continues, even our very own population of Chinese white dolphins might face extinction. Dolphin conservation around the world, I think, uh, you know, there's some very positive things that have happened, but the threats are growing for many of these species. Next time on Adventures to the Edge, I head back out to sea in search of the largest mammals of them all, the whale. And I learn how